Namaste. Today we read a very interesting poem of Sri Aurobindo. Every poem is interesting, but here there is something very interesting. And it is called the Triumph Song of Trishanku. Why it is interesting is because Trishanku normally is regarded as a kind of failed mission. Hung parliament is Trishanku. Trishanku means neither here nor there. Trishanku is referred to as a gap between what you want and what you actually receive. But as always we see, Shurabindo has this masterly, divinely masterly knack of turning a seeming failure into a triumph. This is his, so here we see in the name itself, the triumph song of Trishanku. So the story of Trishanku, first of all, Trishanku belongs to the Ikshvaku clan, clan, the Surivanshis of whom Lord Rama also ultimately is born. So Trishanku is a very pious king, good king, that whole clan is like that. And as he grows old, he is a king who has performed all the dharma and duties according to the dharma. But he is seized with an aspiration. Some would call it ambition, but it's a valid aspiration. That why should I die to go to heaven? I have been a righteous person. I have not done anything wrong in my life. I have lived according to dharma. Why can't I go bodily in this mortal body to heaven? Look at it, the aspiration of physical, it is not physical immortality. This is a wrong way to understand Shurabindu's Yoga. It is divinization of matter. Physical immortality is a consequence. So he wants the physical body also to taste the immortality which is found only in the heavens. He knows that, not the Asuric way. Asuric way is that, you know, I'll control the conditions of death. You may control all the conditions of death, but death will find its door. But is there a way that the body also tastes immortality? Like the mother says that, you know, even the body shall taste, remember God, it's in Savitri. So he wants this aspiration. So he goes to sage Vasist, who is the, you know, the great uh, seer of the Ikshvaku line. And he tells him that, you know, this is my aspiration. And Rishi Vasis says, look here, I am not here to entertain all kinds of foolish uh, ambitions that a king may have. So he denies it. He says no. So he says, okay, but his aspiration is there. So what to do? So he goes to the sons of Vasist. Now this connects us to that story of Vishwamitra killing Vasist's sons. So there is a background to it. You know, it was not a killing like merciless killing. So he goes and, um, and it's a symbolic story also. So he goes to the sons of Vasist who have an ashram nearby and he tells them, please, uh, can you help me out? And these are the hundred offspring. So very obviously they are probably his disciples or whatever. The energy is released by his tapasya. And they say that, oh, our guru has told you no and you have dared to come to us. So in their anger they curse him. So they curse him that, you know, you have dared to ask us and thereby humiliate our guru. So you become like a chandal. Though you are a king, you will become a chandal and you have to beg for food. Now we know chandal is the worst kind of human he only takes care of the departed. But look at the paradox of the story. He wants to go to heaven in a human body. And Chandal is a job by job description. He sends everybody to heaven. But out of the human body. That is what a Chandal job is. Job description. You will see it when you... And now it is used in a very uh, derogatory sense. But if you go to Varanasi, the man who engages... Raja Harishchandra also was a Chandal. He was again... You know, if you see this, these stories, he also becomes a Chandal. Not by choice, but by strange fate. And because Raja Harishchandra became a Chandal, the Ghat is named after him. And not only that, all the Chandals in Varanasi who take care of the last rites, not as a priest, but they are the ones who will arrange the wood and they take away whatever is left over. So they are regarded as, he is regarded as Dom Raja. And even the king of Kashi had to bow down to him. Very interesting story in Varanasi, he is called as Dom Raja. 
so you can't just take a decision so look at the kind of socialism that existed in indian thought you know which is of a very different kind but coming back to our story he becomes a chandal so he becomes a very ugly man goes door to door with begging bowl but he doesn't say anything because he says well i mean they had a right to curse me he doesn't react uh, that no i am a king and i'll destroy you people he doesn't do that so because of that he earns a kind of merit and uh, then in the process he hits upon uh, rishi vishwamitra and he tells him that you know this my state and he asks he reads his mind and sees this is his aspiration but why has he become a chandal so rishi vishwamitra get furious so he says how dare somebody could do this so he says i'll do a yagna and in that yagna i'll make you ascend to heaven so he does a yagna and in yagna he calls everybody including the sons of vasist but the sons of vasist are furious they would not come and not only they won't come when the invitation goes they throw a curse they like throw all kinds of malevolent energies and they say no this will never succeed this is our curse and in that process vishwamitra gets himself very angry this anger is a word but the rudra energies are released and he destroys the hundred sons this is a story it's not like he took a like it is shown in some movies that he took a farsa and went on on the rampage no it was because uh, according to vishwamitra's logic that you people are coming in the way of a work which according to me is a great divine project one day which shirbindo will come and fulfill shirbindo and vishwamitra have lot of similarities in one sense not in all sense one is the name vishwamitra both are lover of humanity shirbindo has been labeled as that <laughs> and the second most important this divine project of ascension and the third is that the gayatri which was given by vishwamitra should be in the perfect set and give sure in those gayatri so there are certain similarities both are uh, even warriors vishwamitra had that you know engaged against the asuras whereas um, sure bindu also released his uh, divine energies against the asuras so there is a kind of similarity just like between agastya and sure bindu so we see this similarity so vishwamitra then start the yagna and uh, as he start the yagna by the tapasya eskesis the body now he is not doing the asuric way that i'll stop the conditions of death by the power of tapasya he is making me ascend now he ascends right up to the doors so now what do you do so indra says no no this is not the law you can't do it like that you have to come down you see that this is not the law we find again in a colloquy between sage agastya and indra where agast wants to go beyond and indra says you can't do like this a time will come when you can go that is a different story altogether so they he goes and uh, they close the door they say vishwamitra may do it but i we can't uh, allow you this is not the law of the land here like you know somebody may say that you know government of india has given us permission but local police may say no no we don't recognize the fellow on the road will catch you and say no you do what i am saying so this kind of a thing so he comes down what to do so vishwamitra again sends him back again the same thing so poor trishanku you know he is caught but now vishwamitra has taken in on to himself that no he is not going to accept defeat because he knows this is a um, valid cause so what vishwamitra does he says all right you people will not allow him to enter into your heaven right i'll create a new heaven now this you know is a fantastic story and i believe this is possible somebody had once asked me a question that if you become god one with god because you know we all are potentially that so can you create a universe yes you can create a universe and in this story you see that vishwamitra starts creating a parallel universe he starts cloning the stars even you know you must have heard about the southern cross the northern cross and the southern cross so he creates starts creating stars and when he has created a parallel universe probably a today we see all the stars studded sky and then he says that now i am going to create a new indra clone indra that is the time all the gods come and pray to him please don't do it it will be devastating how can there be two governments then finally vishwamitra understand this may create an imbalance so he creates an annex heaven by the power of thought and tapasya in which trishanku dwells everything there is like a heaven but it's a heaven created by the human consciousness by its tapasya shobindo passingly mentions it he doesn't mention the story but he mentions that there are heavens which are like annexes created by human thought 
So there are two kinds of heavens, not heaven in that sense. One is the heaven which exists as, uh, you know, a domain, typal beings live there, the gods live there, and um, they are places where, you know, you have uh, uh, like higher domains, different domains, vital heavens, uh, heavens of the mental world, of the ideal. As we see, they are typal worlds. But there are heavens in which people often be here go after death. These are annexes created by human thought. That good people must have a place to go. These heavens they can't go. But they too deserve something. So over a period of time, just as you have a domain of death which has been created by human thought. Hell which has been created by human thought. Similarly, there, is, there are heavens or a heaven which has been created by human thought where it seems the good people go. So actually they don't go there but because there is a space like that in which they go and stay for a while and come back i don't know whether you have chitrarath there and urvashi dances and somras i doubt it very much but then there are annexes created for that so now did trishanku succeed well at least partially he did physically in his mental body in, in his physical body, Trishanku has entered a space where he continues to live forever. Now, this is something very fascinating. It's not that heaven, but it's a heaven of sort where his physical body could travel. He's not on earth, but in that space. In that magical space, he can save, stay forever. On earth, not possible because the moment he comes to earth, the forces, that is the problem which Shurabindo has taken up for the next level. So, this poem is about the triumph song of Trishanku. I shall not die. It starts with a master line. Refuses to die. What is death? Sometimes you laugh. So much halabalu about something that doesn't exist. There is no death. There is only life. Life in different forms. Life on earth. Life on other domains, planes. When we leave the body, we travel through all that. And once you have had one experience of that kind, that this universe is teeming with life, then the fear of death goes away. I shall not die, although this body, when the spirit tires of its cramped residence, shall feel the fires, my house consumes, not I. Cramped residence, when the soul grows beyond a point, the body cannot contain it. This was the reason why Swami Vivekananda left. This was the problem that for sure we know to contain within the body. That's why in Savitri there is that passage, a will, a hope immense now seized his heart. That why can't the body live according to this ideal? Because his soul has expanded. Imagine London and Tokyo and Paris, my spirit seeing are. How that consciousness will live within the human body? When Sri speaks about, the mother speaks about Savitri, she says, one of them, there are four things. One of them is the experience of the Divine Mother to adapt to the falsehoods of earth nature. What we would have felt to enter into this body so when the residence is so cramped, that's why some of the people who develop very fast may leave the body. That doesn't mean they die. Nobody dies, by the way. They continue to exist because they are freed from this residence. So he says when the, the, there is a development, Trishanku's aspiration has led him so far. So when the body is consumed by the fire, body is consumed, not I. I shall not die. My house consumes. The body is the house and I am the householder, the I, the soul is the householder. Leaving that case, I find out ample and ethereal room. I expand into space. My spirit shall avoid the hungry tomb, deceiving death's embrace. Death can embrace me. Excuse me. No way. So how it will deceive? It will become so vast. Jojo, Surusa, Mukh. Death is trying to frighten and Hanuman becomes even vaster. You will consume me. Let me see how great is your hunger. I am greater than your hunger. So this hungry tomb, hunger that is death, this spirit of devouring ends up ourselves being devoured. That is the Upanishadic saying. So here there is an indirect reference to that. My spirit shall avoid the hungry tomb deceiving death's embrace. I have not lived by hunger. I have lived by aspiration. So, night shall contain the sun in its cold depths. The night is death. Death at one place is described in Savitri as the 
remnant eater of the cold remnants of the sun when stars collapse they enter into that space call it uh, i don't know dark matter or uh, black hole or whatever it doesn't matter matter never matter mind never mind that was button to sell okay <laughs> spirit keep it high okay that is my addition <laughs> so <laughs> so night shall contain the sun in its cold depths time too must cease there will be a time when anyways there will be a pralaya the stars that labor shall have that release i cease not i remain human consciousness is beyond time beyond space it has the capacity to go and identify with the eternal so he says even pralaya cannot destroy me it can take away the gods it can take away the suns the stars but you cannot destroy me because i am beyond that or the first seeds now i am not only beyond the end i am also beyond the beginning or the first seeds were sown on earth i was already old even before matter is formed the jivatman has jumped into this darkness of inconscient matter comes later let's have a holiday of an adventure where will you go it's too bright here let's enter the night you can't see anything yes but your torch fire is there with us as our light okay but we need some little fun enough fun you will have lot of adventure and i'll be there the divine mother what form you'll be there sometimes i'll be hidden in the womb of darkness you cannot see me sometimes i'll come as nature sometimes as life sometimes as mind climbing into your thought and then one day i'll reveal yourself myself to you as the divine mother the radiant form so the divine mother also plunges so earth the first seeds were sown on earth that comes much later living forms i was already old and when new and when now unborn planets shall grow cold my history proceeds so there are many planets and you know stars that are taking birth we know that yet to take birth that's how creation is out of that energy and even when they have taken birth and grown old look at the stretch of consciousness my history will proceed i will not even when they are the unborn ones are born and they will grow cold so people often say oh sun will grow cold sun will grow cold some 5000 billion years is 1000 5000 years is enough man will grow into the <laughs> new being so this is how i am the light in stars the strength of lions and the joy of mornings i am man and maid and boy protean infinite i can change and adapt whatever container you would give me i'll enter that this is how the uh, soul has journeyed and people who have the experience molana room says that no why should i be afraid of dying i was a rock i died became a plant i died became a tree i died i became a bird i died i became a beast i died i became a man even in human life don't we die a number of times bachpan ke din bulana din acha hai bhul gaya na abhi you know otherwise you'll be forever a little baby dependent when you leave behind you die to your childhood of course the essence always remains when you die to the child you grow adult when you die to the foolish adolescent you become a mature adult when you die to the mature adult you become a wise old man when you die to the old wise man you become a child full of wonder and delight again isn't it so what is the fear of death it's a forward movement so here he reveals i am the light the way we can outgrow this fear of death is to remember we are infinite ananto ham anando ham i am the light in stars the strength of lions just imagine and the joy of mornings only the master poet is doesn't it sound like who in the blue of the sky in the green of the forest whose is the hand that has painted the blue glow in the strength of a man in the beauty of women look here in stars the strength of lions and the joy of mornings i am man and maid and boy protean infinite 
I can change like anything because I'm infinite. But if we fix ourselves, that's when death starts. Death starts when I when we say, you know who I am? I am doctor so and so. Now I've started dying. Or when I say, you know who I am? Take out a card and flash. You know who I am? I am Sharma and Varma and Pandey and Singh. I began to die. But when you say I am the child who has built this universe and live in that universe, <laughs> how can you die? <laughs> you are everywhere. That is also me. This is death, poor fellow. What will he do? Not poor fellow, dirty fellow. But he will, you know, he has this scavenger, no? So dirty fellow. So what he will take? He will come and take this body. You say, doesn't matter. I inhabit all things. So this is a question of, I am a tree. Now people often get insulted. So you tell them that you can insult my name here. You can't insult me. <laughs> because you don't even know me. I am a tree that stands out singly from the infinite blue. I am the quiet falling of the dew. And I am the unmeasured sea. Look at the contrast. I am the tree standing out against that sky. Infinite blue. But I am also the dew drop. Also the unmeasured sea. All these things I am. And yet I am something beyond them. What is that beyond that ultimately identity when we have expanded? Whenever death comes. But this is to be practiced in life actually. When death comes too late. You know that fellow will say. Buriya bistar And you will wonder. What shall I take? What shall I leave? Are I like this person? I am so attached. Like the ancient Egyptian queens. will <laughs> Kings and queens. They carried even the maids along with them. Just imagine you know. How silly it would be. So better <laughs> obviously. That you will take to heaven. So that time you are like. You know what shall I take? What shall I leave? No. We don't have to live like that. You can tell death, I, in the highest sense, have made you. Do your job. But you can't take me. You can break this house of clay. So he says, I hold the sky. So when you become so vast, that you are boundless. Every day we must practice this boundlessness of space and endlessness of time. And it liberates us. I hold the sky together. And I bear the teeming earth. I was the eternal thinker at my birth. So it is that divine consciousness which holds the sky. At the same time, I bear this earth both. At once that extreme and at once this matter. And at the same time, I have taken birth as a human being in whom I have built up the thought and shall be though I die. You think I am dead but the thinker in me, the divine in me, the cosmic self in me, it doesn't die. It can never die. It's not only a question of it will change one form after another. All forms are but manifestations of one spirit and when we realize the spirit identity then there is no death. So we shall just read it. The triumph song of Trishanku. I shall not die, although the body, when the spirit tires of its cramped residence, shall feed the fires my house consumes, not I. Leaving that case, I find out ample and ethereal room. My spirit shall avoid the hungry tomb, deceiving death's embrace. Night shall contain the sun in its cold depths. Time too must cease. The stars that labor shall have their release. I cease not. I remain. This I of course is not the ego I. It's understood. It, the I is just a word we use. Earth the first seeds were sown on earth. I was already old. And when now unborn planets shall grow cold, my history proceeds. I am the light in stars, the strength of lions and the joy of mornings. I am man and maid and boy, protean infinite. I am a tree that stands out singly from the infinite blue. I am the quiet falling of the dew. And am the unmeasured sea. 
I hold the sky together and up bare the teeming earth. So I am the one who holds the sky and earth, the gravitational pull or the magnetic force, whatever you call it. I hold the sky together and up bare the teeming earth. I was the eternal thinker at my birth and shall be though I die.